In today's show, I'm going to give you five best practices for those of you that are still in that phase in Power Apps where you're trying to figure out all the things that are going on. Right? Fair. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about some data sources. What is the best one versus what is not the best one? Uh, we're going to talk about forms versus patch. Ooh, very scary topic. And then a couple building tips. And then one of my biggest pet peeves that I see in people when they start building Power Apps. Should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to talk about Power Apps best practices. And the focus here is not best practices for those of you that have been doing this for a thousand years and know everything about everything. Yeah, not for you. This is more for those people that are either beginners or still kind of like figuring out as they go along. And where this all this content comes from is part of our Power Platform University through Power Apps 911. We had to teach this week, we did a live session on all of our best practices, right? So it was this giant document of 75 different tips and tricks and things that we'd come up with as a company that we try to pass it along to our new hires and now to our, new, our university students. And so I thought, well, I can't really share all of this with you, but what I can do is give you five of the tips, not the five best tips, but five really good tips. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to run through those. So. Let's just switch over to my desktop and table. Okay, so over here, I've got the same document that I shared with them. Obviously, you don't get the whole document. They did get to download the document. And so we're going to run through here and just pick out a few of the ones I love the most. And we're going to blur out the other ones. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I know. It happens. But if we scroll down a little bit here, here's the first one, right? Don't make one giant app. Build multiple small apps. So this is something that we run into quite a bit. People sit out to like, hey, I'm going to make an app to do blah. And then that goes so successfully, they say, well, now I want that app to do more and more and more and more, right? I always use the example of my buddy, Mark. Um, he does this for his uh, construction company. And so their app kind of started out as just a CRM, but then all of a sudden it added quoting and then project management and it added all these things. And before he knew it, you know, they had, I don't know, 50 screens in the app with probably a thousand controls and the app just gets really lethargic, right? Now, when you build an app that is too big, and by too big, I do mean too many controls, too many data sources, too many screens, too many, too large of collections, where you're going to see the lethargy, is that the word? I don't know. Where you're going to see the slowness first is as the maker. So when you go to open that app, if your app is taking minutes to open, you should be a little nervous, right? It, your app has gotten too big. If you change a formula and you have to like wait 10 seconds for the app checker to catch up before you move on, your app has gotten too big. So in those cases, what we do, like with Mark, we said, all right, well, let's take the quoting piece out, put it in its own app. So now in his master app, when he clicks on the button, we do a launch and it just launches the quoting. And so we've just kind of module by module pulled the app back apart so it's gotten smaller. You will have stability issues if your apps are too big. So, but it's going to not be stability for the users. Your users will be happy, but it's going to be you, the maker. And who do you care about more, yourself? I thought so. So try to keep those apps as small as possible. And when you're keeping the apps as small as possible, it also lets you make the app more focused. So one of the earliest apps I ever built was like a time tracking system for um, a Canadian customer. And so like, they wanted to have an app for inputting the time. And then they wanted to have it also then be able for the supervisor to approve the time and then for accounting to do their work on it, right? So it's real easy to say, oh, I'll make one big giant app to do all that. Could. But instead, we made three focused apps, right? We made a small mobile app that was optimized just for the workers in the field to do their job. We then made a second desktop app that was optimized just for the project managers. And we made a third uh, app that was optimized on desktop also for the accounting folks, right? And by breaking this up into three different apps, we could make each app smaller, which meant it ran faster, was easier to manipulate, and... They were each focused, so they were better apps, right? The, the, someone didn't jump in there and have to pick their poison and click on different buttons to find where they want to go. The timekeeping app was like, you open it up, you said, enter my time, you answered some questions, and you were done. Simplifying it, cutting down the training experience. So don't make one giant app to rule them all. That's my advice here. All right, next on the list, let's scroll down here. Okay, so the next one here is prefer patch, not forms. So when you first start with Power Apps, you're going to use forms. It's okay, right? Use your forms, right? Whether you're customizing a SharePoint form or you're saying you're going into, you know, Power Apps and saying create an app from data and it's building a form for you. 
Forms are the natural starting place and they teach you a lot of good stuff and they are super easy to use, but you outgrow forms, okay? You're gonna outgrow forms. And the reason you're gonna see your outgrow forms is forms aren't very flexible, right? Like if you're like, hey, I wanna kinda of make it do blah, 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 it probably doesn't do that. You're better off using patch. With patch, we just take the individual controls, put them on the screen where we want them, how we want them, we design the experience the way we want, and then we write a patch function to do that. So forms are not flexible. If you're trying to do complicated things, if you all of a sudden start finding yourself having to build forms where you've got, you're changing the update logic inside the form, or you're showing or hiding cards in really weird ways, or you wanna have a very complicated on success with a bunch of conditions, if you're doing that, you've probably outgrown forms and you just don't know it yet, right? You're, you need to start looking at using patch. Patch is faster, it's more flexible, and it has more control. Now the big downside of patch though, is you have more control, right? So what does that mean? If you want to, you know, you've gotta figure out how to shape your data. If you're patching a number column from a text input, you gotta put a value around that to make it better, right? You've got to understand completely what's going on if you're going to use patch, you're gonna to have to account for all the fields. If you're patching 100 fields, your patch statement's gotta have 100 fields in there. If you're using a form with 100 fields, you just drag them in there and it works. So patch is more work, it, it feels like, especially in the beginning, but as you get more comfortable, it becomes more natural and you have more flexibility and more control to do complex scenarios. So grow into patch. Don't be afraid of patch. If you feel like your forms are letting you down or there's just too much going on, it's time to move to patch. Also, side tip, right? Forms don't work in offline. Random, random note. Okay, that's two. Let's scroll down here some more. There's lots of these, so it took me a second to scroll, but here it is. So the third one. Pretty apps that don't work are pointless. This is like one of my biggest things. You know, thousands of people come to us every year to help them with their apps, to support them with apps, or build their apps. And one of the ones that always causes the most angst between us and the person looking to get help is when they're like, hey, look at this app I built. It's beautiful, it's awesome, it's got all these animations and images and embedded stuff, and the app is mwah, beautiful, but it doesn't do what I want it to do, right? It doesn't work. Oh, I, I, I get real stressed out when this happens, right? Working is more important than pretty, right? Make your app functional, then you can worry about what it looks like. A very pretty app that doesn't do anything isn't very good, right? Just go make something in paint if that was your goal, right? So functionality first, because a lot of times what you're gonna find is that yes, while you spent 500 hours making it shiny and animated and all that, you know, in reality, all the hard work was adding that really weird multi-select gallery that your boss wanted, right? She said it has to do blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, that's hard, I'll do that later. I'll make it pretty first. And then you find out that all your prettiness gets thrown away because the way that you planned it, it goes bad. Form over, or no, function over form first, right? Get it functional, then go back and make it pretty. Oh, it, like I'm, I'm sweating just thinking about how mad that makes me sometimes. All right, let's scroll down some more. Look at that. There's even special sections for Model Driven, Power BI, Power Automate. They've all got sections. But so data source specific, this is another one that gets a lot of people in trouble. When you start creating your variables or your data source tables or your columns, try to avoid reserved words, right? And reserved is probably the wrong word. But you know, things like date, you know, there's a function called date. So you shouldn't have a column called date because you know, when you go to type in date, it's like, well, which one do you mean? Right? I, one of my data sources have a column called color, but there's also a color function in Power Apps. And it's like, which color do I mean at any time? So avoid date, amount, time, status, value, activity, data, you know, color, all of those type of column names. You can use them, Power Apps will overcome it, it's possible, but you're creating yourself more work, right? So like down here, I use the example event date versus date, right? Date's a reserved word, event date is up for grabs. So by just using event date instead of date, you've made your life a little bit easier. So just a great little pro tip. The other, the little bonus tip here, like um, the, the A there, SharePoint, don't create columns with spaces in the name. So if you're creating SharePoint columns and you're putting spaces in the name, the underlying system name ends up with this underscore X0020 underscore garbage inside of it, which causes pain as you start to do more advanced things later. So just get in the habit early of not creating um, your column names with spaces either or your table names, any of that. Spaces are bad. But Shane, I love spaces. Fair enough. 
watch that video and it'll talk to you about how to create it the right way and then add the space after the fact. Last but not least, oh, this is the million dollar conversation. We had like an hour conversation as a class, right? And that was the beauty of this document, right? There's 75 or so of these. And because it was a live session, it was interactive. We kind of, we used all of these to enter, you know, debate and talk about and just plant seeds with people to do a better job. Anyway, so when it comes to what is the best data source, right? The answer is very clear. It's Dataverse. I, there's no argument. Dataverse is the best data source. It's the fastest. It's got the most features. It's the only native data source. Microsoft builds the most features and functionality there. And quite frankly, they want us all to use Dataverse. So they continue to incentivize us to do it. The only challenge of data versus the data source is that it requires a license, right? Whether you're building a Canvas app or a model-driven app, Dataverse does bring, you know, those premium licenses into the conversation. But if you have premium licensing, Dataverse is the answer. If you do not have premium license, SharePoint is the best data source. SharePoint is really the only data source. But Shane, what about Excel? Excel is a terrible data source. Do not use Excel. I think that's actually the... Next grayed out bullet. Maybe I'll ungrade it just so you can see that. I literally wrote that already. Don't use Excel. So really you're asking yourself, hey, if I have a license, it's Dataverse. If I don't have a license, SharePoint. And when you start to complain about SharePoint being slow or not all the delegable functions there or scale, then you're going to say, oh, where do I grow to? Grow to Dataverse. Now, one of my students had a great question here, though. He said, hey, what about SQL? I love SQL. I also love SQL, especially Azure SQL Database as a service. It is so good. But the thing that I would say is that Dataverse is better. Azure SQL is the very close second, though. And so if you go into and say, okay, I'm going to go to a premium data source and I really want SQL to win, then it's okay. Go use SQL, right? If you're a SQL shop and you're SQL heavy, you're already comfortable there, I'm okay with you using SQL. But if you're like, I don't care if it's Dataverse or SQL, then Dataverse is the right answer. Okay, so like I said, that, that ended up being like a half hour conversation for us, just this one topic. But I wanted to plant that with you, you know, as, as our last best practice, right? Dataverse is the best if you got a license or a premium license. If you got a standard license, SharePoint is the best data source. So there you go. That is my breakdown of five best practices, right? You know, there's 75 more. If you signed up for university, you could take the class and you would know all of them and you'd have this download. But anyway. If you have questions, comments, ideas for other best practices you want to share, leave them below, right? Other people would love to hear your best practices. Or if you've got future video ideas, things like this you'd like to see me cover, maybe one of these topics triggers something for you and you think I need to go spend an hour on what is forms versus patch. I could be game for that if you talk me into it in the comments. So, all right, with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that have subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 901. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool. Thanks and have a great day.